All right, guys, I don't know if anyone's gonna hop on yet. You should just be seeing the graphic for now while I get everything situated. Um, but I see some of you guys hopping in here. We still have about 10 minutes, so don't panic. If you are on, feel free to say something. I've got, um, I'm getting this pinned, I'm getting it up, I'm getting it where everyone can see, where I can see comments. So. We've still got a few minutes, I'm a few minutes early, but I was uh, wanting to make sure everything hopped on and worked. And all that jazz. So, you guys may be seeing my uh, workspace now. Hopefully. Hello, hello. If anyone's hopping on, we've still got a few minutes. I'm not going to start until right on time. So, until then, we can chit chat and whatever, but we're not going to get started until it's time. I had great intentions. I was gonna fix some glitter on one cup and I was going to um, sand another while I was waiting, but neither of those things have happened, so. Send us a note if you're on. Let us know if you can hear me. Um, there is a delay. We're at about a minute delay, it looks like, so keep that in mind. others have kiddos that had last days of school today yes they're asleep thank the lord they had um today was their last day of school so they had wet and wild day at school so all the kids went to school in their bathing suits and played out in the um they put out pulled out water tables and like little kiddie pools and um, fountains and stuff so they're two so they're in like a mother's morning out program so all the kiddos in the mother's morning out program we're excited and I'm sure everybody is napping well today not just mine so while we're waiting to get started I'm just sanding a cup I'm sanding some imperfections on a decal Because if I'm sitting here, I might as well be productive, right? As we're getting started with this, if you're in here and you use a turner already, you have one that you love, give me a, I don't know, some sort of tell me yes if you use the metal rotisserie arm currently. I just want to see how many people are using what so we kind of know where to focus. I am with you because the idea that they don't get to go to school for several months is like, oh gosh, what am I going to do? If you're watching the replay, if you don't see live up in the top left corner, 
Um, feel free to fast forward until the time we get started. I'll put the graphic back up so you know what to fast forward to. So I didn't see anybody comment yet. Does anybody use the bare rod on their rotisserie motor right now? All right, I can check that off my to-do list, ladies. All while we were waiting. All right. I have 128. We'll give it just a couple more minutes. Um, as we're getting ready, I am using today this style water bottle. This is actually the one from Hobby Lobby just now when they had their clearance on them all. Um, it's got the screw off top. I think it's a little more similar to the one that... Kylan used for her Kybre cup. Um, it's definitely a little different than the one Phyllis used, which is fine. Nothing wrong with the one Phyllis used, but just modifications. And I cannot take credit for this idea. I got most of this from Phyllis's video the other day. I guess that was on Monday and I um, just modified it to make it work. Um, if you don't have your journal, blank paper, Google Doc in another tab, whatever, or just plan to watch the replay. Again, and take some notes. Uh, I often end up writing on a different piece of paper and then transferring it into my journal. I am an on-the-go kind of gal. That's why I like my uh, Google Docs. I am rarely sitting in one place. And I'm almost never with my craft journal when we go live. So I write it on other paper and copy it over frequently. No, you don't know how. Um, n oh. I'm going to I'm going to butcher your name. I'm sorry. No Helia, no Helia. You don't know how to use your turner. All right. I've got 130 on the dot, so we're going to get ourselves going a little bit here um, and get started. So, as I mentioned a second ago, oh, I said I'd put this graphic back up. So, Anybody that was uh, fast forwarding would know where to go. Um, so we'll just chat for a second. We'll let that hop up and we'll kind of reset to get ourselves started for the actual live here. Um, we'll give it just a minute or two. You don't know how to use the rod. Okay. Is your... Uh, Turner, the rotisserie kit, is that what you used with your? All right, we've given that a few minutes for people to uh, know where to fast forward and we'll go ahead and go back to me and get started. Okay, so the first sort of piece to this, I guess, I'm gonna say is if you're using a rotisserie motor with a rotisserie rod, when Phyllis was doing her live, there were several people asking about the rotisserie motor. What motor you have is irrelevant to this. What matters is what kind of arm you're using, right? So many people have retrofitted their rotisserie motors to take PVC arms. You're a step ahead. Um, I'm gonna show you one method today. Another way people do it is with the little tiny yellow Nerf balls. I've seen several people do that and um, I just couldn't get it to work. When I tried to put the Nerf ball through the rod, I ended up ripping the entire Nerf ball. Like there was just no good way for me to get it where I could still get the PVC on it. 
that's how I came up with this. So, um, and I've got tools that are scattered all over my table, so bear with me. Um, this is overkill for the amount of strength, but um, my husband has my pliers in his truck today, so I'm going to just make do. So the first thing we're going to use, and I had mentioned this in the um, event, sort of after Kylan had posted the uh, supplies list, <laughs> bear with me today, guys, um, was the football, one of the Dollar Tree footballs with a tail. And so this is really just part of retrofitting your rotisserie motor to take a PVC rod. So even if you aren't using bottles, if you're using regular tumblers, um, this, this piece of the uh, live could still be relevant. Um, we're gonna retrofit this to take a PVC arm. So I like to use the tails of the Dollar Tree footballs. You can tell I've already taken the football off. I've probably used it, it's probably in a cup somewhere. So I will then just tear, they're just foam, so it happens really easily. I'll just tear these three little foam parts off. Um, sometimes I save them, usually I trash them. I haven't found anything cute to do with them. I've got a stack of them because I kept thinking they would come in handy for some sort of craft project, but they haven't. So um, they'll probably just end up in the trash. For now, they're gonna end up over here on the other side of the table out of my way. So now we've got this piece from the end of a Dollar Tree football. And if you look inside it, so first of all, on this end that's connected to the football, you're gonna wanna peel it back just a smidge because there's still some glue on there from when it was glued into the football. Does that make sense? So you're gonna push it down just a little bit, break that glue, just a smidge. And then there's a plastic rod. Can you guys see that? that's inside there. And we're gonna pull that rod out, or that plastic tube, out of the foam. So that's where these come in handy. Again, this is overkill. Regular pliers, grippers, whatever, will be more than adequate. I just didn't realize he had put them in his truck and took them to work. I find that if I twist it, rather than just straight pulling, I have better luck, especially down at this end where there's still some glue. Oh, that's a good idea, Kai. Those would make good shims for leveling the turners. I usually use popsicle sticks because I have a million of them that are covered in epoxy. <laughs> So if you have to rip this a little bit, that's okay, because you don't need the whole length, but you want to get to where you can pull this tube through. There we go. So like I said, once you get it, you twist and you break it free, then it'll just come out. So you're going to get rid of this plastic piece. Again, there's absolutely nothing I've seen that it, this is useful for, but if somebody has a great idea, maybe you could use this to level your turner, although it would probably just roll, but it's going to the side for now. Now you're left with this, which is just the foam part from the football. Now you need to just sort of see where your um, arm is. I know some people have retrofitted these where their um, rotisserie rod is really short. Mine is, I think about 12 inches. So, um, if you need to cut this down a little bit, cut it down a little bit. If you need to use more than one of these to cover your rod, use more than one. But again, I wouldn't go much longer than this because you want this to go as far into the PVC as it can go. So now we're just gonna slip this over. Again, I find twisting just because it doesn't bunch as much. Feel free to take it out of your motor. It's probably easier if it's not in your motor because you can twist better. And then we're just gonna slide it all the way on there. Somebody had asked earlier today about my spinet modification, um, came across the board. Same exact concept. I'm using the same exact piece of foam, but it's going on this 
which is just a 5 sixteenths threaded rod. It's 12 inches long. It should be short. Um, yes, the replay is always available. Um, so if you're using the spin at 5 sixteenths threaded rod, same concept. Put this foam over it. Now you're good to go. Keep in mind your weight limit on your spinet if you're going to try that modification. That is a little heavier than the arm, and um, most of the water bottles are going to be heavier than the arm. All right, so now we've done sort of step one, and we've retrofitted our rotisserie rod to take PVC arm. This is just one of my regular football arms. It's three-quarter inch PVC, and see, this part's... I'm gonna flip this. So I personally, this is personal preference. We talk about personal preference mattering a lot in this group. I personally like the end that I had to rip a little bit to be away because then it's not gonna bunch up. You can save it or you'll be able to go to um, the event and the link will be there. So I'm just flipping this around so that it goes the direction I want it to go. And then I'm putting my rod back into my motor. We can talk motors and rods and troubleshooting in another live if there is a need for it. But you would choose today to not cooperate, wouldn't you? Okay. Don't ever run this without your bushing in there for any extended period of time. I'm just doing it for the sake of time right now. Um, Okay, so just to show you, this is my regular three-quarter inch football arm. Boom. Whoopsies. That's why you don't do it without the bushing in. Uh -huh. There we go. I'm going to fix that and put that bushing in real quick. Um, it's going to bother me, so I'm going to fix it. So up to now, we've just... Um, all we've done is basically retrofit our, retrofit our turner to take a PVC arm. So we haven't gotten to the meat of this, which is really talking about the water bottles. So the first thing I would like to sort of reference, I guess, to you all, there we go, now we're in there, is every water bottle you buy, or every brand you buy, is going to be slightly different. So every brand that you utilize, you buy, you might have to customize these fittings. So when you make it, I would say, um, write on it, which brand it is, and um, where you get it, and then um, prepare to, you know, be prepared to make a couple of them if you use different brands. So I don't know exactly which brand Phyllis was using the other day. I want to say she might have been using Walmart. Um, this is the one from Hobby Lobby that was on their clearance this past week. Those, anyone else that got them, they were on clearance for $4. Um, I am using three quarter inch PVC, Susan. I use three quarter inch on pretty much everything I do. I know some people love half inch. I like three quarter inch. And I will use three quarter inch schedule 20, which is like the 20 PSI on most projects, most. This is gonna be my one exception. If you are putting your arm on a retrofit where you're using the foam, you have to choose schedule 40 PVC. What does that mean? 
Schedule 40 PVC is what we call thick wall PVC. It's your standard plumbing PVC. If you go into Home Depot, it's the ones you can get in two foot lengths. Now there is a thin wall PVC, which is a Schedule 20, which is this one, that I use for most of my building. This is an exception, and I'll show you why. I'll show you why. If I put Schedule 20 PVC, I'm having to fiddle with this. This one's just not, I think my screw's not tight. If I try and put Schedule 20 PVC on here, it's got too much wiggle room. It's not tight enough. So you want to use your Schedule 40 for this. You schedule 20 all day long for anything else. Um, if you want to get technical, the schedule 20, schedule 40 has to do with the amount of PSI that the PVC can withstand from the inside. So it is if you were to actually fill it with water, what pressure could it stand before it would be at risk of taking a leak? There you go. Here's my answer. All right, let's get to the meat of this. And we're just going to work just with the rotisserie turner for now, and then I'll touch on that other one in a minute. Um, so, we are using this water bottle, as I've said. I'm gonna take the cap off. We can talk about caps at another time. Follow Kai's videos for some great ideas on the caps. Please add some close-up pictures of the motor mounts. <laughs> We're not gonna stress the motor mount. This is a very rough model. It's kind of irrelevant to the moment. Um, <laughs> But Tessie, we can do another troubleshooting or do another hop on, bring you in if that's something in the future that you think would be helpful. So this is sort of the base idea as I took it from Phyllis um, the other day, her live, right? So if any of you watched that, this is pretty much what she talked about. But where you had, she had it attached to where this was gonna screw on to a screw arm and the whole nine yards. We're gonna modify it slightly. So, um, slightly, not dramatically, slightly, to make it work for Sorry guys, I just I just brain farted on something. Um, to make it work for us. So first thing first, when you, I would say take your bottle into Home Depot or measure the inner diameter of the mouth of your bottle of choice, brand of choice. So I know there's a whole bunch of brands and they're all gonna vary ever so slightly. So start with that and use that to help you determine which size adapter you're gonna get. Now your threaded side, I don't know if you guys can see that that is threaded on the inside. Your threaded side is always gonna be whatever your arms are. If you're using this retrofit, it's gonna be three quarter inch. It's gonna have to be three quarter inch because that's what's gonna fit on this foam, okay? So you're gonna use three quarter inch by whatever's gonna fit on the slip end into your bottle the best. So I've got, this one is a one inch. It's gonna be way too big. This one's three quarters. It fits right in. It's a little loose. I'll tell you how I fix that in a second. This one is half inch. It goes in, no, that one's three quarters. Uh, let me double check myself. This one's also three quarters. This is three quarters by half an inch. So if you had a half an inch screw in turner instead. Um, three quarters seems to be what worked best for me. And I just realized that I should probably flip this around to be the direction most of your turners have. Most of your arms are threaded and your receivers are this end, I believe, for most of you. Um, that use, so your receiver, this would be what's attached to your But for retrofitting, yeah, we could do it either way. So for retrofitting it, we can do it with either one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this one this time because I can't, just to be different, just to show you. Um, yeah, because then we can use the same thing. So 
figure out which is gonna fit the closest. If you've got one that's just a little bit too big, you can sand it down. So if I want, but if I wanted to go up a size from the three quarter, the next size up is an inch, and that was gonna be to such an extent that if I sanded it, I'd have to sand it to where there was no more PVC for it to be at the inner diameter. Like, I don't think you guys are gonna be able to tell, but the inner diameter of the PVC is the inner diameter of the bottle. Does that make sense? So there wouldn't be anything to hold it. So that would be too big. So you just kind of have to fiddle with it. So I'm gonna go with this one, three quarter inch. And because it is a little bit too wiggly in my opinion, this foam came from a Dollar Tree football, the ones with the tails, Faith, um, that had these on the end. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit of electrical tape and I'm gonna put it, I, I'm fiddling with this and realizing this has too much give. I'm gonna put some electrical tape on it. Now from my experience, cause I've already done this once with this same bottle, I needed less than one all the way around to get it um, right. But I started by wrapping it all the way around once just to see if that made it tight enough. And then I'm gonna try and stick it in. You want it to be firm, but you don't want it to be so tight that it's not, um, movable. There we go. Boom. So now it's nice and firm. Like I can get it out, but it's not going to fall out. Does that make sense? You could put a little bit more on the other side. If it made you feel better, have it a little bit tighter. I'm gonna move a little bit of it. So this is the part I was saying, every brand you get, you're gonna to have to customize a little bit. So you're gonna to have to make sure you've got the correct adapter that's gonna fit well to your cup. You may have to add some electrical tape, you may have to sand it, whatever it's gonna take for that brand. There we go, now it's a super tight fit. See that? Now, we're gonna talk about the P. I don't wanna just leave it like this, personally. I want PVC that runs the whole length of my bottle. You could do it just like this and be done, actually. You really could. Um, but let's just do PVC. I personally like my PVC to go all the way down and touch the bottom of my bottle. Okay, I guess this should be considered a sign that I use my PVC cutters too much because the screw just fell out of my PVC cutters. For real people, you can't script this stuff. Yeah, Phyllis, yours was all the way in too. Um, like I said, Phyllis is really the one that came up with this idea. I just took it a step further to make it work on the rotisserie rods. I'm just screwing my PVC cutters back together because why wouldn't we add to the drama today? It's that kind of day. All right. So what I did, I put this in there so I could feel it go to the bottom. And then I'm going to line up my blade to be basically right at the bottle and I'm going to just come up a smidge like a literal smidge and make a line because I know that I need a smidge for this because keep in mind your PVC goes all the way in to this piece. So in theory, if your rotisserie rod is already long enough that it's gonna hit the bottom, you don't necessarily have to run PVC the whole length. It's just gonna to add to your stability because this is gonna be 
closer to the width of the bottle, I guess. Um, now, when you're making this for good and you've got all your measurements the way you like them for your specific bottle, make sure you then go on and use some PVC cement. Um, most, most PVC cements that you can get in, like Home Depot and Lowe's, are going to be two-part cements, a primer and a glue. So keep that in mind. Check yours if it's a primer and a glue or if it's an all-in-one. Um, the all-in-ones are much more convenient. I would suggest buying the all-in-ones. Spend the extra dollar or something. I believe the one that we tagged in the event was an all-in-one. Um, to be honest, Phyllis, I haven't run it long enough to have an opinion. I just immediately started tinkering to get it to work on this. Um, I, I tinker. That's what I do. I tinker more than I make cups. Um, and actually, I have never done a water bottle for this very reason. I just happen to have one from the Hobby Lobby sale. So, all right, now I'm going to put this in and make sure it's still nice and snug. Make sure my PVC hits the bottom uncomfortable. Now, I've already retrofitted my rotisserie rod. Oops. I'm assuming you're talking about the PVC glue. Yeah, it will do that. And it also smells really strong. Keep that in mind, ladies. It is not a project to be doing like right near your bedroom. Okay, now keep in mind, I know this motor is not level. That is the motor and has nothing to do with what we just built. <laughs> um, that is the motor not having screws all the way in it. As I said, I tinker. This is a Turner that I have been tinkering and fiddling and adjusting and I've taken the self-tapping screws out and they probably need to go back in before I use it. But for the sake of showing you guys that it works, there you go. Now, I guess I could plug this in and show you that it's tense. That would probably help. Now, if you have other brands of bottles that are thicker, Keep this in mind as an option to help you customize, right? Because, there we go. I'm going to hold my hand on the motor just so you can see that the motor is what's not level. Um, th this is a one inch, so this could work on something bigger. I grabbed a couple of clear plastic bottles that I had. I was going to see if they fit. Um, and they would take about a one and a half inch. PVC comes in half, three quarter, one inch, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, four, five. I mean, it comes as big as you need it. So I would say probably a one and a half or a two is going to fit some of the larger water bottles. I'd say once you get above a two, you might as well be using a noodle or a football. Um, but you can use it for everything else. So you, I just realized this is white. You guys can't even tell that it's spinning unless you're following these imperfections and the little scraps of sticker that I haven't cleaned off. But it's spinning, and it's spinning just fine. And it's staying level, and I would feel comfortable putting it. It's staying as level as it's gonna stay given that my turner is not level. Um, so, does the, are there any other questions specific to the rotisserie motor which I'm letting drop now because I let go, um, before I continue on with sort of part two. Yeah, now it's, no. Nope. Before I get distracted tinkering um, with the motor. It's going back and forth right now because I don't have, um, this little bushing piece screwed in properly. Yep. It's, it's my motor. This is my tinker motor. Um, I do not ever actually turn. Well, that's not true. I do turn cups on it. It currently has been disassembled for the last week so um 
it's I I literally put it back together for the sake of doing this because there were so many questions when Phyllis did hers the other day. One other thing to think about when you're doing this, this is just a side note. If you are using one like this where your cap screws on, make sure you're taping these threads or be ready to clean up those threads. Just expect that because it's gonna get epoxy on it, okay? Um, hold on a second, okay, we're good. Um, yeah, this is my often disassembled turner. Um, I wanna to touch on one other thing similar to this. Um, and that's, we're gonna use the same base piece that we had just used, but if you have a turner that's this, that's the style we've built in this group and other things, that has the support arm that usually your football arm is going through to a slip, right? Um, is there anyone in here now that uses this style where it goes through to a slip? And I just realized if I wait for you to answer, I'm waiting like over a minute, so I'm not going to wait, but still answer in the chat. So if you have the kind that goes through the support arm, which personally for cups, I like better, but that is a physics discussion we can get into another time. Clearly, this is not going to work for you as it is. So you have to create another little quick modification. Again, quick modification, a couple bucks. Um... I took some scrap three quarter inch PVC. Quite honestly, it could be a little bit shorter, but I didn't want to cut it. And the opposite adapter of whatever you use here. So for this case, because I think this is how most people have their set up, I used the male piece on here. So I will use the female piece, female to slip on my turner. I could do it in reverse. I did do it in reverse initially. It doesn't matter. Use whatever you're comfortable with. Um, I'm just going to put that onto here. I'm not even going to worry about cementing it. This will be what goes through your support arm. Make sure that's a nice tight connection so that it doesn't slip when you screw it in. Same bottle fitting because we fit this to the bottle. This had nothing to do with the turner. This is fit to the bottle. This much of the adapter is all about the bottle, right? We customized this per the brand of the bottle, not for our turner per se. Um, I'm just adding another piece of electrical tape. And so this is the correct length for this brand of bottle. Tightening it in again. There we go. You want it to to take a little muscle to get it in, but not so much that you can't get it out. And then now you can screw this on. And this one actually is a working turner that I use on a daily basis, so it should be. There you go. Watch for that sticker and that imperfection um, so that you can see that it's spinning because again, I opted to use white, which was probably not the best choice. Um, so it was just a little piece of three quarter inch scrap PVC, like the leftover from making some arms and then the opposite adapter. So one male adapter, one female adapter in whichever order works for you. I believe most people's have the mail on the arms. Somebody that has arms to a different brand of Turner, let me know if the mail is what's on your arms and the female's what I'm just on your Turner. I believe it is, but you could very easily do it opposite. Like I said, I've done it opposite. Um, if you're doing your own, do you have a parts list for what's needed to make the Turner? We have a video on this Turner. Um, search the group for hashtag Turner build and it should come up. Um, we did a live on it, and there's a parts list in the whole nine yards in the event. Um, links and measurements and a cut list. I think that's also still in the Google Drive. Um, 
Susan, if you're still on, if you'll post a link to the Google Drive, I believe it's in there, um, the parts list. It might be under supplies list. I think it's still in there. But it's definitely still linked in the event as well. So this gets you, if you're somebody who uses this kind where the support is usually on your arm, here's your quick modification to make it work with this as well. Do we have any other questions? I don't remember who it was earlier today who asked me about the spin it. Um, I don't really want to get out of the questions to miss it, but um, it's basically the same as doing it on the rotisserie motor. Yeah, we did um, the live on the build, and then the very following week we did a um, troubleshooting live where we brought people into the live and troubleshooted their turners. So if there's interest in that, we are. I'm happy to do that again if there's some interest in that. This is really like, makes me dizzy sitting here listening to it. So just um, these parts, this is another one that's three quarter by half. Something to keep in mind, we do a lot with PVC in here because PVC is cheap, it's easy to cut, you saw me cut it, easy to cut, it's cheap, and it sticks together well. You don't have to like be a building guru to make it work, right? Um, so we like PVC as a material. And, um, sorry, I'm still trying to fix this. So something to keep in mind about PVC. If you are using PVC, and it is three quarter inch PVC. What does that mean? That means that in its schedule 40 form, so the thick wall form, the inner diameter is three quarter inch. So your outer diameter on a three quarter inch piece of PVC is like 1.15. And someone's going to correct me and say it's 1.153 to the negative 50. I don't know. But it's, yeah. It's like 1.1 something. Ha! Got it. I use these things all the time, so with these break, I'm in trouble. Are there any other questions? I'm trying to keep in mind that we have like a minute delay, but I'm also trying not to waste your time. Oh, I have munchkins waking up. Are there any other questions? Did anyone answer me about if you have a different brand of Turner arm that already has the screw on, is it the male screw on on the arm and the female on the Turner base? So just keep in mind and plan to customize this for every brand of bottle you use. But it works really well once it's done. These were just two quick modifications to get it to work. Again, I'll pull this one back up. On a rotisserie rod and on a turner that uses the support arm. Just because those weren't covered by Phyllis the other day. And we thought, well, let's take it a step further so it works for everybody. Are there any other questions? You guys are all quiet today. We are at 45 minutes, so if nobody has any other questions, we will go ahead and wrap it up. But um, 
if you're watching the replay or if you have a question come to mind later on, feel free to post it in this. Give us hashtag replay. Um, helps us find it, but not 100% necessary. We'll we should see it anyway, but it just helps us find it. Um, and with that, and I did try this the other day and leave it turning for about 30 minutes. That's another one of my little tips. If you're ever trying a new retrofit or you're trying a new arm or you've put a new football on or you're trying a different size, whatever the case may be, let it spin for a good 30 minutes without any epoxy, without anything on, just a blank cup so that you're not going to be upset if it falls. But if you give it a good 30 minutes to an hour of it spinning, turn it on, forget about it, whatever, you're going to get a good grasp of if there's any loosening or any issue. It might seem great right away, 30 minutes down it might not. So always put something on, let it spin for a while, help you test it out. Okay? So with that, I'm going to put the graphic back up and we will see you all later. Feel free to ask us any questions that come to mind after the live.